So it was certainly an action-packed run home to September, both in terms of results and personnel, with the Eagles losing Nick Nakanui and Andrew Gaff for the rest of the season. And losing Nick against the Pies in Round 17 was to many a killer blow to West Coast Premiership hopes. Um, Simo, we saw you in the press conference afterwards get a little bit emotional yeah. about uh, about Nick going down again. Yeah, I think we all were. The um, you know parked the season and you know fighting for that. Uh, cup, but just the the man and what he's gone through, and he's not alone. And a lot of people have gone through knee reconstructions and redone their other knee. Um, just to see that happen, I just you know, it was uh, heartbreaking. So for, for what he does for not just the club, but for the state and for the AFL in general, I was just so disappointed for for him. And um, yeah, that that took a, a little little bit out of me that day. Just for a fleeting moment, when you first heard the confirmation that it was an ACL, yep. did at any stage cross your mind that wow that might make it a bridge too hard for us now. No, I, I don't think in that sense. No, we've, we've been, we've been. Um, we, a lot of teams say the squad mentality, but we've been living by that um, all year. So <clears throat> we just had to gave someone else step up. So Nathan Vardy was there waiting to be selected, and unfortunately for, for Nick, he wasn't part of the next uh, the next part of the campaign. To the Derby, uh, Jamie, emotions were running high after the Andrew Gaff, Andrew Brayshaw incident. Um, you guys were in control of the game. You were heading for a finals campaign. What was the mood and the conversation in the coach's box after that incident had taken place and the game started to spin out of control a little bit? Uh, to be honest, we didn't really <laughs> no, we didn't. see, we didn't see the, the, the incident in the box um, and we weren't privy to it, but we obviously saw uh, the reactions post the incident and... and how the players were reacting on the field. And I think at that point, Simo, you decided you were going to get down because yeah. we were giving <laughs> some free kicks away and we knew something was going something on. Something was happening. that um, We knew there was an incident. Uh, we didn't see it. Um, but there was a response from the Fremantle players that's, that we weren't handling very well and we're giving a few free kicks away. So the most important part about that game was we won. And uh, at the time, that's all I was thinking about. So what's going on with these free kicks? And so I went down on the bench to settle things down and perhaps to have a quiet word to the third umpire. And at the same time, Gaffey came off and um, I asked him what happened and he briefly told me and I was just trying to calm him down. I sort of mentioned that there's nothing in it. I've seen it, it's fine. But I hadn't seen it. Um, and I needed him to go back on because we lost Will Schofield, I think, in that game for, to a hamstring injury. So And McGovern had a, a finger issue that we thought he, that might rule him out for the rest of the day. So really needed him back on the ground and because I didn't know the magnitude of the situation I was like mate you'll be alright just get back on there and um, help us win. So then it all broke loose after the game and um, the fact we won by 10 goals was secondary which um, is quite frustrating. You've got to deal with other issues but um, yeah some of the reactions I, f I thought were pretty poor from um, everywhere and uh, and obviously you know, Andrew made a mistake and he owned that mistake and you know, we obviously accepted the eight weeks and it was a disappointing result for him and for us but um, there was a bit of hysteria there for a week or so that was you know, a bit out of line. What was it like in and around the club, Jamie, for that week? Because I guess in a way you went sort of into bunker mode, didn't you? They were coming at you from everywhere. Yeah, there was obviously plenty of media attention around. Um, but yeah, we, we Simo does try and create a, a sanctuary for, for the players and... Um, we do try and create that environment. Uh, it was a little bit different as well. We had uh, young Brayshaw, he had his brother involved at the club and obviously everyone felt for, for Andrew and, and, and what had happened. Um, but we also needed to protect one of our own as well. And um, all along we do try and create that sanctuary and, and we wanted to try and keep it business as usual. And I think we couldn't wait to get over to Adelaide yeah. and take, take on Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide and, and get out of town and focus on doing what we're I suppose we're paid to do, and, and that's play footy. We talk about some games being more important than others. They're all worth four points. Yeah. <laughs> but you mentioned the GWS game before. I get the feeling that Port Adelaide game was worth a little bit extra than just the four points as well, for the reasons yeah. we've just discussed. But when we see the vision in the, in the coach's box after the game and just the elation and jubilation, what did that game mean to you? Oh, for me personally, it was, was just the win because that meant, I think that got us to 13 wins or we, I think it qualified us for finals. Yeah, uh, it was. It was your 13th. So I was, that's all I was thinking. And the fact, um, the build up, you know, you try and twist as a coach, you try and twist the week into a motivate, you know, to try and motivate the player to some degree. But they really stuck to their tasks during the week. We reviewed the, the Fremantle game like we normally do. We prepared the Port game like we normally do and did. And Andrew Gaff went to Melbourne to, to, um, confront the tribunal so 
we sort of separated uh, from from Andrew in that sense, and we got on with our jobs. And I think it was the game, like to kick a goal after the siren, the same as the final. And I think Gov had just recently signed his contract, and you know it was um, our culture was questioned that week, which you know the, the, you start to bristle straight away when someone questions that. And um, to get that win, I, I think first and foremost it was the win. But the rest of it was, um, it was, I suppose it was satisfying to, to know their players have got some really good resilience. When you do get some arrows from outside the footy club around things like culture, yeah. um, do you get frustrated? Because really the only people who know what the culture of a footy club are like are those inside the footy club, aren't they? Well, they are. And I don't think there's, I mean, what is culture? It's, everyone's got a different definition of that. So I think I spoke to the players before the game. That's all I wrote on the board was culture. And, and I spoke how I think it's, it's about the people. Um, and having good people at the club and playing with spirit and uh, what we represent. So we're a big club and we're the front line of the footy club, we get that. And uh, yeah, so that, that was probably the special part of the game that we, we got challenged in that area and our, pl our players responded in a way that look, took us to the last kick of the day, but we were extremely proud of that performance. So form-wise, it was a bit of a mixed bag late for the Eagles. The loss to Melbourne, then the win over the Lions to seal second spot and a home final. But that mounting injury list, Jamie, what was the feeling amongst the group? heading into September, you managed to grab that second spot, all important. Where do you think the team was at? Um, yeah, I, I think we were in a good space. We finished uh, top two and we, we managed to qualify uh, home finals, which is really important. Um, we, we travel all year and, and it does take it out on you. So to, to know that we had that, um, we had a little mini break before, before the finals, um, which we did in the, the middle of the season as well. And then we got onto our preparation for Collingwood. But we were pretty confident with where the team was at. Um, as we've said all along this, in this program, uh, we had a squad mentality and uh, there was going to be injuries, but then there's also opportunities for guys to come in. So, um, yeah, we were wrapped to, to a finished top two, but we still have plenty of work to do. Simo, you'd ridden the roller coaster. You said that you break the season up into chunks and obviously getting to the 13 wins is the first one. Yep. Job done. Finish in second position. What were the keys to September in your eyes? I think the belief was there with the players. I could see it in, the, in our leaders in particular. I thought uh, there was a look that I hadn't seen before and I, I, it was built off the consistency of the season. And um, despite the fact we were second on the ladder, there wasn't a lot of talk about us. Uh, even in the West, I think people were waiting for us to fall a little bit. So, and then we'd been dealt such highs and lows. You know, everyone says to, to win a premiership, everything's got to go right. Well, not much did uh, throughout the season other than the fact we finished second. So there was lots of fairy tales going around and lots of um, the narrative about it, someone's destiny or another club's. We weren't part of that um, conversation. So we, we sort of hit the finals with internal belief, but externally I think teams are waiting for us or people outside are waiting for us to fall over a little bit, which is exactly what you wanted, where you want to be going into final series. So to the 2018 final series, it kicked off with the first ever final at Optus Stadium, a qualifying final against Collingwood. Let's check out the highlights.